In my last video that I posted, I went through a bunch of best practices for doing stock photography, things that you should probably keep in mind while you're going through the whole process. Today's video, I wanted to go one step further in the process and actually show off how to cull and find the photos that you actually want to upload instead of maybe just uploading everything. So this is video number two of the stock photography series. Don't know how many there will be in total, but we will go from there. So for me, I have all of my photos on an external drive. I have that backed up onto another external drive. This is because I can take this between my home and my workplace. If I ever need to do any editing, I can also bring it from my home to my work in my office right here. If I wanted to make a video using the photos that I've taken, I have them on an external drive that I can just bring everything over with it all together. But I also have everything backed up onto an internal drive on my computer as well. So I don't really have to worry about losing the photos that I've taken. Now the file organization structure is gonna be different for everyone. For me, I just have one folder that's called raw. And then inside of that, I just make a new folder every time I'm offloading an SD card with a group of photos. And then I name that folder after whatever that shoot was that I was offloading. So if I was going downtown on August 25th, I'll just title it August 25th downtown shooting or something like that. So that helps me sort everything into the dates that I remember shooting. And I try to make the titles easily rememberable for myself so that if I'm ever trying to go back and forth between folders, trying to find some photos, it's easy for me to remember which one is which. And then inside of that, I never really rename my raw photos. So things can get a little convoluted, especially if I'm doing a lot of time lapses or hyperlapses, and maybe the default file name with the numbers has to reset because it goes over uh, 9,999. That can be an issue, but that's only an issue that I've only run into once, despite having run over that file name limit quite a few times now because of all the time lapses I've shot. So with all that being said, that's basically how I organize and sort through all of my folders. Now I'm telling you all this because we're gonna go into Adobe Bridge, which I made a video about, you can go and check out right up here. Adobe Bridge is a free software made by Adobe that you can use to sort through all of your folders, your files, your photos, whatever you have, it gives you a nice quick preview of all of your files inside of it. So it's perfect for what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna to be going through all of our photos, sorting them into a specific folder for our stock photos, which we will then later edit with. All right, so here I am in Adobe Bridge. This is the home page basically that it opens up on. So here I have my internal drive on my work computer, the backup drive and my photography external drive. So if I open it up here, we see all of my folders here and I have my raw folder that I have all of my stuff in. If we go back, we can also see I have a stock folder, which I have now added to the favorites folders. If you don't see this, you can go up and go to window and favorites panel, and then this should pop up. You can basically just drag this folder onto this window and then it will add it to your favorites folder. This will be coming in handy later on, so I would recommend doing this. So now if we go into the raw folders, here we have all of my stuff. Basically all I'm gonna do is go through folder by folder and look for good photos, simple as that. So these first three folders I know aren't very good photos. These are from back a long time ago, so I'm just gonna go ahead and skip those and go to the first snow day, which was basically 2020's first snow day in Ottawa, so I went out and took some photos while it was snowing. So you can see as I'm scrolling, it's gonna take a little bit to load the photos. Uh, they are full-size raw photos, so there is a bunch of data to process here, but seems to be doing a pretty good job. So as I'm sorting through all of these photos, I'm keeping in mind all of the tips that I said in the last video. Uh, if you haven't watched that video, you can go up and check it out on the top right corner of this video. Uh, and then feel free to come back to this video once you're finished. Basically, all I'm looking for is well-exposed, well-focused, clean subjects where the subject is in frame and is in focus and, you know, looks good. And I'm also trying to find some photos which might have a little bit of extra empty space, which then can be used to add graphics on top of if the buyer so chooses to. So all of those tips from the last videos are in my head while I'm sorting through all these. 
Uh, it definitely seems to not be a whole great amount of good shots, but there is a few that I can see turning out well. So I do like this photo here that I have selected. So all I'm gonna do is hold down on Option or Alt, click, drag, and drop it onto the stock folder. There are other ways of sorting through all these photos. You can go and add all of your favorite photos, a certain rating, and then sort through all the ratings later on once you're all done. You can also go and add a keyword, which would be stock, and then add this keyword to all the photos that you're wanting to add for your stock photography. You can also right click and go to copy to the stock folder. Many different ways of doing the exact same thing. Uh, basically it's whatever workflow that you're comfortable with, then feel free to do that. So now I'm just gonna keep going and trying to find photos that will look good potentially to be sold. And just gonna keep adding more photos to this folder. Once I'm finished with this folder, I'll go back to the raw folder, find the next one, which is my trip to France. Let these images load and add them to the folder. So you can tell that I'm not really going categorically uh, I'm not just sticking to one city at a time. You can basically add all the potential photos that you think are sellable all at once without having to worry about making sure that they're only from your city or only one certain category. Uh, feel free to just add them all to this folder. So these here are some photos that I'm actually not sure if they'll be accepted. This is basically a boat going on the river underneath the city of Paris. Uh, you can see that it's a long exposure, so the flag is blurry and the whole tunnel itself is blurry, but the boat itself is in focus. Because of the amount of blur, I think it might be flagged as being a bad photo by the auto detection system that they have on sh sites like Shutterstock. But I do want to add it because I do see its selling potential to some audiences that would be talking about this trip underneath the city of Paris. So now that I've gone through all of those folders, I've sorted through all the good versus the bad, I've added all the good ones to this stock folder. The next step is to actually go through each one individually and just double check that you think that it will match the standards that you're wanting to upload and that it will match the standards that the site that you're uploading to will allow you to upload. So I like to go to the film strip on Adobe Bridge. This will give you a bigger view of your photo. And from here, I am just inspecting each photo individually. This one I can already tell is a little bit too grainy, so I'm not really a big fan of it. I think I can even make this window bigger. By zooming into this photo, you can really see how grainy it really is. And the dark area is quite black. There's not much highlights, and I don't think this one's going to fly. Ha ha, get it, because it's a drone shot, fly. Anyways, moving on. So these top three, four, eh, these top three photos are all a little bit too dark for me, so I think I'm going to remove them from this folder. If you're worried that you might not have copied them to this folder and you might have accidentally moved them, you can always just go and add a new folder to your originals let's say untitled folder, add this to favorites. And then as you're moving through your stock folders, uh, you can just go to move to untitled folder. So then you're keeping them, but they're in a different folder that you can go and sort through later on. Just to actually double check that you've actually backed up those photos. Uh, you, the last thing you want is to be going around and deleting all of your photos by accident without having a good backup somewhere else. So as I go through each photo, I'm keeping in mind things like the exposure. This one may have an issue with some overexposure along the horizon. That might be fixable and it might not be too noticeable after a little bit of editing, so I'm gonna leave this one in for now. I'm also keeping in mind the focus, so uh, it does look like everything is properly focused. We can see some individual branches super zoomed in here, so I think that's good. And the subject of this photo is basically just the lakes, the trees, so there's not really 
too much worry about them being uh, distracting. I can also do some photoshopping and getting rid of some of these houses around the area. But overall, I think it's already a pretty good base. A photo like this is a good example of that empty space that I was mentioning in the last video. Things that people could add graphics to or put some titling here that says, uh, welcome to Ottawa or something like that. Uh, all of this big white space does give people the ability or the option to add some of that extra text. And then we have the nice parliament buildings framed nicely with these trees. This one also might have an issue because Shutterstock might detect that the, all this foreground is too black, too out of focus. So I'm hoping that it will make it through that process because I do think that the parliament building does look pretty nicely framed in the background there. And I'm just gonna keep going through, sorting through all of these photos, keeping in mind the editing that I'll be doing later on to fix some of the problems that I might see now. Having these two logos on this photo might be an issue that I might have to get rid of. We'll see you later on. This is a good example of a photo that might have looked good smaller, but when I open it up, it is way too out of focus. Uh, we can see here. So let's just go ahead and move this to our untitled folder. Get that out of here. This one has a bunch of little specks. Must have been raining or something that day. So we can go ahead and also move that to our untitled folder. And we continue. This one's out of focus. Now, one nice thing about Adobe Bridge is that, say for example, with this photo, I'm worried that the sky is gonna be blown out and there's not really much point of using this photo. I can go and right click and open in Camera Raw. This will quickly pop up this Camera Raw plugin, uh, which is, I think, a part of Adobe Bridge, at least if you have the Creative Cloud, at least. I'm not sure about that. Um, but from here, I can do some edits that I can basically do in Lightroom without having to take time to open it up and import it into Lightroom. So I can go and test to see if this guy is usable and it looks like I might actually be able to make it work if I darken it enough, raise all the dark spots like this. I think I can still use it despite how bright it was before. So I can just go ahead and click done uh, it's gonna save these changes. And then if I open it up into Lightroom later on, the changes that I just did have already been saved into the metadata. So then those changes will be shown in Lightroom as well. So now I have gone through and double checked all of my photos. Some of them like this photo here, I'm not sure if it'll be worth it to upload, but I think this one is cool in and of itself because you can see the French flag, you can see that it's going through a tunnel. Uh, it looks a little bit warp speedy kind of thing. So I think it looks cool enough to try at least. So once we're happy with the selection that we've made, uh, we basically have this one folder full of all these photos uh, that we have copied them to. So now they're uh, their own batch of photos inside of their own folder, all for your stock photography. You can just keep all of your stock work inside this folder. Uh, all of the editing that we'll be doing, we can save all the JPEGs that we'll be exporting into this folder so that all of your work can stay together. From here, you can also go and add keywords to all these photos that you've just sorted through. Keywords will be important later on in the stock photography process. And I do think that if you add keywords uh, in Adobe Bridge, then you'll be able to use them um, later on. However, in I think two or three videos from now, in this series, I'll be going through how to upload photos a lot easier than individually uploading to each photo site and adding individual keywords for every photo. So I will say right now that you don't necessarily have to go through and keyword each one individually, but that's up to you. Uh, if that's part of your workflow, go ahead, feel free and Maybe even try it out for now and see what you think of it. Even if you're not uploading all these to stock photography, you can still try them out later on. So in the next video, I'll be going over actually editing all these photos that we just sorted through. Stock photography seems to have a lot more to talk about than I was initially planning to. So there's probably gonna be at least two or three more videos about stock photography coming up. 
in the next few weeks, but I'm prepared. I hope you're ready for it. So that is how to use Adobe Bridge to find and sort through all of your photos to make a folder and sort and find all of your stock photos that you'll be using to upload later on. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough time in this video to go through all of the Lightroom edits that one might want to use on their stock photos, but don't worry, next week that's what we're gonna be covering, all about Lightroom editing for stock photos. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you back next week. If you like this video, feel free to drop a like and if you loved it, drop a subscribe. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.